the camera body is fairly well stripped down now and I'm going to remove the rewind button now that was loose of course not everybody has a tool to tighten that up so it may well be that whoever fitted it was exceptionally cautious about tightening that up there's a single screw here that drives the sprocket shaft uh, drives the sprocket wheel from the shaft I can press the shaft out now that can be cleaned the sprocket wheel can come out and it doesn't need to go through the cleaner back to the top of the camera now here I need to remove this screw which I can see has been fixed with something possibly paint so I'll put a drop of acetone on there to soften that up while I fetch the correct screwdriver That screw can come out, the gear, the spacer washer and the drive dog beneath it, which is pretty sticky. That does not want to lift off easily. Everything here is a bit sticky with old grease. If I can encourage that up without um, damaging my tweezers, that's better. Two screws. A plain screw down here in this position. This shouldered screw has a spring attached to it that operates the ratchet which makes sure that the film advance can only move in one direction. That was the little ratchet head out with that screw off with the guide bush and gear here we have the clutch, I'll just split the clutch, it's three pieces, a friction spring drives the outer and inner one to the other, the top of the camera is dealt with, oh not quite, let's remove the circlet from here well it's a bit greasy I can't get my fingers onto that let's turn it around and have a go from a different direction that's the circlet off and the return spring the lock lever the lock lever's job is to lock the film advance when you reach frame number one. Here we have the release lever, the top of the release lever shaft. The release lever frees up the film advance so that you can wind on to the next shot when you depress the shutter. I'll put that spring to one side, put the screw into the cleaner. I'll remove the return spring for this lever, which is fine, and easily damaged, easily lost. So I put that carefully aside with the springs. I don't put that through the cleaner. Everything at the top's done. Bring in my block of wood to work on. 
the camera will focus on your bugger I'll zoom out Yeah, it's thinking about focusing now. Okay, so the lock lever for the rewind button. It serves to keep the rewind button engaged once you've clicked it into position until the film advance is moved. It's held in by a shouldered screw. It has a return spring. We've got that off. The lever that locks the rewind, three screws hold our film advance shaft in here. This is very, very sticky with dried out grease. That screw was loose, so was its mates. the back of the camera we can retrieve the take-up spool there's a metal bush in there which needs to be cleaned the take-up spool will be cleaned manually the film advance shaft I'm just retrieving the three screws that held that in place that's very very sticky with old grease uh, that would be man Right from the manufacturing process, circa 1960, I would think. The camera body is now stripped down. There's, all this now needs to be cleaned. Uh, it certainly doesn't look like it's going to be a terrible task. I want to remove traces of adhesive from the front panels either side. Traces of adhesive from the base of the camera. Clean out any old grease and dirt and dust and so forth from the body. But that looks like that'll be straightforward. The shutter assembly at the front of the camera. Just looking at this now, we know that the four screws had fallen out of the back here, which holds that in place. I can see that this has been repaired before and someone has mucked with the soldering at this point. Typically you do not disturb the soldering for the flash contact at that point. There is a plastic sleeve with a screw which you probably can't even see down in here with a little tiny screw and that is used to clamp the flash wire to the back of the shutter I think that's enough for the moment what I'm going to do now is put the other mechanical components into the, into the degreaser and after they've had a good long soak in there they can go into the ultrasonic cleaner when they come back from the ultrasonic cleaner they will look like new parts they will be shiny and clean free from any trace of grease and dirt and oil and apart from a few wear marks on them they will be shinier than they ever were at any time since they were first manufactured so the shutter can be the whole shutter assembly can be put to one side now so I'll just pop that into a container the other components likewise have been sorted. These are all parts that need to be dealt with by hand. These components all need to go into the degreaser. And the body, as I said, I've got to deal with the old glue on there and clean it, but that looks pretty straightforward. Right, that's it for this camera for the moment. While those components are soaking, I have got 
other things to do. I've got paying customers who are waiting for their cameras. So I will stop right here on this one. And next time you see these components, I'll be getting back to work on this project. It might not be today. Probably the most unglamorous part of the whole repair process is cleaning things. And here I've got to get the glue off the front panels at the side of the, the camera here and off the base. This is by no means a uh, bad example. There's not that much glue stuck on there. And I'm fairly hopeful it will come off fairly easily. So, let's start. First I'll try a bit of naphtha, see if it cleans off with that. So I'll soak a bit of naphtha onto a cotton bud and swab that uh, panel. I would say that's making very little impression on that. There's nothing coming off on the cotton bud that I can see. So I'll move up to something else. I'll try some uh, acetone. Now with acetone you've got to be careful. You don't careful where you splash it. Don't get it on the leatherettes. It'll eat leatherettes. But it will shift some adhesives. Some of that's lifting off. Now, on the front of the camera there, I don't know whether you can see it in the light. Yeah, you probably can. You see some vertical stripes down the aluminium. Now that is where someone scraped glue off on a previous occasion. And those are just scrape marks from the tool they used. And the tool they used was probably either a scalpel blade like this. Well, the back of a scalpel blade is very good. That flat straight edge. But it'd be something like that that they'd used. So the camera has obviously seen some major repair, and probably more than once, because it must have been ugly enough for the repairer to want to go to the extent of doing that. Oh, now here I've used a different solvent. Here I've used CRC Heavy Duty Lectra Clean. And this is getting rid of it. This is melting that uh, adhesive. And this will be the answer for me. So I'll soak a cotton bud in ElectroClean. This is another solvent you need to keep off the leatherettes. It will do nasty things to leatherettes. And it'll do very nasty things to clear plastic windows, like the view for, uh, exposure meter windows and things of that nature. It will ruin them for you in an instant. Not that you'd get away with naphtha with those pieces either. This is not a bad example for um, glue on the front of the castings. <coughs> Excuse me. It's um, a thin layer and nice and even. I could probably have chosen just to apply fresh adhesive and put the leatherette straight back over the top and not expected to have any problem with doing that. At other times you'll find that the glue is lumpy and bumpy, uh, may have fragments of leatherette firmly bonded in places and stripped down to the casting in other places and it's anything but a smooth surface and so it all has to come off to allow leatherettes to be fitted 
back smoothly and evenly. I have to be careful how much I put on here because I don't want it running down past the hinge and onto the leatherette at the back of the camera. Well I'm shifting it from pillar to post here more than getting it off so I'm going to scrape some of this off. And where the solvent has been offered it scrapes off very easily indeed. Alright, now having removed some of that bulk back so I can get this surface looking a bit better. The residue is very sticky, uh, tends, to, tends to form lumps. It's not uncommon to find a variety of adhesives have been used on an old camera when you come to service it. Many years ago people would have used shellac and some of you who have been repairing cars as a hobby for a very long time may remember using gasket cements that were shellac based. Brown fairly pungent, sticky stuff typically came in a little jar with a brush on the inside of the lid or something like that used to be used as a adhesive for putting on leatherettes going right back more commonly in recent times people use double sided tape as the adhesive which um, certainly works well enough in some cases I don't use it because I'm old fashioned Yuck. Forms horrible sticky crumbs that adhesive. If you're doing this at the dining table, don't let that rubbish fall on the floor. It'll be into the carpet and you'll never ever get it out. Much worse than bubble gum.
supposed to be springtime here in New Zealand but the weather's been rubbish for the last couple of weeks lots and lots of rain and no, it's not raining at the moment the wind is certainly howling so we're still waiting for the good weather that's looking a bit better Now here is where the spacer washers or shims sat. Sometimes repairers glue those things in because they are too ham fisted to manage their repair in any other fashion. In which case there'll be glue and other rubbish in there to be got rid of. That's it for the front of the camera I just want to get this stuff off the base now and then we'll be done so we'll do the same that softens the adhesive up and I can scrape it off with my scalpel or scrape the vast bulk of it off it's like a sticky jelly at this stage So here we're just cleaning the adhesive left over from the previous repairer. They would have had the task of dealing with the leftover adhesive of the repairers who had been in before them. And it must have been messy enough that they bothered to do that. Or they were thorough enough with their repairing to do that. Not every repairer is self-employed like me and can make their own decisions as to uh, how much time they spend doing a repair. Where a serviceman is working for a larger organisation, he may well have the foreman breathing down his neck, telling him to stop wasting time, just fix the headline problem and get on to the next job. Being self-employed, I have the uh, luxury of making my own decisions regarding things of that nature. So if I want to waste an extra day doing a job because I want to do it properly, even though I can't recover the cost, I can choose to do so. If you're repairing cameras for yourself, Likewise, you can choose to spend a ridiculous amount of time getting the job done too. When I worked at Kodak many years ago, there would have been book times for various jobs much like uh, you get in the automotive world where certain tasks are expected to take a tradesman a certain length of time and uh, woe betide anyone who was taking too long so 
I'm just clearing out any grease from around the base of the uh, film cassette well there and uh, 